How's it going everybody? My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. If you've been following this Alaska Cabin Project series, you've seen I've put up a lot of two-sided logs. The entire cabin is built out of two-sided logs. One of the things I may not have covered enough is how I'm actually two-siding those logs. I'm using what's called a Hedden Lumber Maker Jig. I'm going to show you guys how that works right now. Now the jig itself sits on a 2x6. Or in this case, I'm using a 2x8 with two little trimmers. When you're using a, something wider, you can use anything. You can, you can cut parallel sides to any width you want. You nail a little 2x2 two two onto whatever you're using, whether it's a 2 foot strip of plywood or a 4 foot strip of plywood or a 2x8 like this one here. The whole idea is that the chainsaw is guided by this 2x8 and because this jig is only 5.5 inches wide to ride on a 2x6, this extra little bracket goes in here and that bracket will lock into a, uh, a 1x2 just like that. Now this will let the saw stay stationary and you just use the saw to trim off the side of the log you're cutting. Now you take for instance this log right here. First thing I want to do is I want to roll it to where it's the straightest. So when I take the two sides off I can get two even cuts, one on each side. I also need to know how wide of a two-sided log I can cut out of this piece of timber. The best thing to do is get right down measure out to the inside of the bark and the inside of the bark. This is nine and a half. So I can probably get an eight inch cut out of this section of log and that will leave me about four inches of flat on this side and another four inches of flat on that side. What I don't really want to do with this log is use my six inch jig because it's a pretty good sized log and I think I can get an eight out of it. And it'll fill in an extra two inches wall. First thing I want to do is clean this area out just a bit so I can work in it. Now once my area is cleared out, I'm going to mark this log at about 98 to 100 inches. I want a full 8 foot log out of it, but I might need to trim up the ends just to fuzz. By cutting it first, what that does is it allows you to turn the log to get the widest two-sided log out of it. Another thing you want to check for is once you've got your log cut to a rough length, check for any kind of heart rot. Most of the times if a tree has heart rot, that rot will just uh, continue to just fall apart even after the log itself has, has seasoned and cured out. From here I'm going to take my 8 inch jig. And I'm going to lay it on the tree. Now this is the interesting part. You can see my view cutting. I'm looking down the sides that are actually going to come off that log and I need to find the best happy medium so I get a good even cut on both sides. So what holds this jig down? Well you've seen the top. This is the bottom. All these nails are sticking out through pre-drilled holes. About three holes every two feet. And you can drop in as many nails as you want. The idea here is to have enough nails that you can uh, tack this board down good and solid, even if there is a little high spot here or there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust it as I think it needs it and start tacking it down. Now, not only are you nailing this down, but it also has a, a, a tilt to it that uh, if you feel like you're too far off to one side, you can, uh, you can stick another nail and kind of tweak it.
The chainsaw jig mounts to the bar with three uh, worm screws and it's essentially just a friction fit. You tighten each one a little bit at a time and it pinches the bar tight enough to hold that jig in place. And there you go. You got a nice two-sided log that's just ready to be used or cut into a beam or whatever you happen to want to do with it. Let's say you wanted to make a square beam. You just flip this thing over on its flat sides, reset that jig right along the flat, which is very easy at that point, and take the other two sides off and you cut yourself a nice square beam. Now that head and lumber maker is basically the only jig I've used for this entire cabin because all I've really needed is two-sided log. But I've also used this jig a bit. Now you're probably familiar with this one. This is a, this is a timber tough, but it's, it's basically a ripoff of a Grandsburg Alaskan mill. Now the idea with this is that uh, your chainsaw comes in over here, the bar goes through this clamp, and the actual cutting bar is parallel with this table. The idea is you set a plank on top of your log, you tack it down so it's nice and flat, and then you take your chainsaw in this mill and you cut a slab off of the top of the log. As true as you can get it. Then after that you can just set your depth between your bar and chain and the bottom of this table. You can cut any size lumber you want. And by lumber I'm talking about boards. This is a fantastic tool for boards. The only thing is I really haven't needed to cut any boards. I've just bought boards from the band mill down the road. And honestly I don't really love using this tool. I don't really like using the other one that much either. What they can do for you though is they can get you beams and boards in a remote setting where you have nothing else but the jig and a chainsaw and maybe one or two straight boards to use as guides. Now the head and lumber maker that I showed you just a minute ago, that's the tool that I've used for almost all of this cabin. And it's fantastic for beams and two-sided logs. It's called a lumber maker, but if you actually had to make dimensional lumber out of it, two by fours and boards, it would be a pain in the neck. I mean, you could do it, but I've ran the thing enough to know it's not the tool for the job. In exactly the same way, this does a fantastic job of cutting boards, but it's also supposed to cut beams and two side logs. And it kind of sucks for that. So if you really want to take on a project and decide to build yourself a remote log cabin and you're just going to do it with a chainsaw, get one of each. Get the head and lumber maker or an equivalent because there is some cheaper versions of it. I think that one cost me 130 bucks. And there's some $40 versions. I think Husqvarna makes one that does the same exact job. Uh, Northern Tool and Supply, they have, they've got a beam maker, which is pretty much the same thing. And it's, uh, it's 40 bucks or so. And I think, uh, I think about the best you can do on one of these is maybe 120 bucks for one of the smaller ones. Just uh, be realistic about the trees you're dealing with. If you've got a bunch of eight inch, nine inch, 10 inch trees, don't get the one that can cut one three foot wide because it's just gonna be in the way 90% of the time. Considering uh, where I'm at and the lumber I'm dealing with here in Alaska, I've run a 16 inch bar all the time and I've never been in a position where I really needed any more bar than that. As a matter of fact, a long bar would really get in the way. So if you're gonna be totally remote and you wanna do the entire cabin with just a chainsaw and a couple of jigs, get one of both. Cause the one doesn't do what the other one does well. Yeah, vice versa. The head and lumber maker, fantastic for beams, way better than the Alaska style mill. Uh, the Alaska style mill, way better for boards or two by fours or anything like that. As a matter of fact, if you're cutting two by fours and such, uh, it's good to have a saw set up for both because you can cut your flats with the Alaska mill and uh, you can set a jig on top to two side them with the head and lumber maker style that I'm two siding the logs with. And it'll be much faster than trying to uh, trying to reinvent the wheel and and do one with the other and they're both good for their own thing. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the Alaska Cabin series. I hope this has answered all of your questions regarding chainsaw mills and how I'm milling these logs. Thank you guys for watching Bush Radical. My name's Dave Whipple. Be radical, eh? See you soon.